Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about the Char B1 Biz. The French heavy tank was used by France in the Battle of France. How I always like to describe this tank is basically the French Matilda. The Char B1 was based on a 1921 design. The Char B1 was arguably one of the most loved French tanks and most certainly one of the most well known. This will probably be our longest video today so strap in and enjoy the ride. But before we get into the history of the Char B1, I'd like to say that we have to reach the 300 likes within the first 24 hours and I will release a new video within 2 days. The idea of the next video subject you can leave in the comment section down below. The comment with the most likes will get a shout out and I will talk about that subject. The voting will close after 20 hours of this video's release. Anyway, now let's get right into the video. The Char B1 Biz is outfitted with a 75mm howitzer a 47mm main armament and three 7.5mm machine guns. And I think it's safe to say that the Germans had a good headache whenever they encountered it. The Char B1 Biz was produced about 300 times, which doesn't seem like a lot and even less than the Nashorn, the Yak Panther, the Ferdinand and the Tiger II have been produced. The Char B1 Biz was almost 6.4 meters long, almost 2.6 meters wide and almost 2.8 meters tall. This was slightly wider than the Char B1. The Char B1 Biz also had an upgraded track width to go with it. It went from 640mm to 500mm. But a common misconception seems to be that Germany used a lot of tanks during the invasion of France, which is just plain wrong. According to Panzertruppen Volume 1, page 120 to 121, the amount of armored strength Germany used was almost 2.6 thousand, which is not a lot. Especially considering that one third of these were knocked out in action and most of these were the Panzerkampfwagen 1 and the Panzerkampfwagen 2. These made up three fifths of the entire German armor. But how did it compare to the Allies you may ask? Well here's the answer. According to the book The Blitzkrieg Legend, the 1940 campaign in the West, the Allied strength numbered about 4.2 thousand. So in the field the Germans were definitely outnumbered in terms of armored strength. But they were also outgunned, for example the Panzer 1. The Panzer 1 only had two machine guns and the Panzer 2, the tank which was most commonly used, only had a 20mm main armament. This was not gonna put a dent in the Char B1 Biz, because the Char B1 Biz had a 60mm frontal armor, 55mm on the sides and 50mm on the rear, and the engine deck was still 25mm thick, and its turret was from all sides 56mm thick. One of his biggest weaknesses was the grate along the lower side of the hull. Eventually the B1 Biz weighed about 31 and a half tons. The B1 Biz also featured a built-in radio, but this was outdated so through production this one was replaced by a far more modern ER51 radio, which could transmit and receive Morse code from 10 km away and voice communication from 2 to 3 km away. The radio operator also had a task to give 47mm shells from the hull to the commander. In October 1936 there was an order placed for 35 B1 BIS tanks. The B1 BIS was to be manufactured by a large number of different entities. In total there were a number of 5 different manufacturers. But the first one got completed and came from Renault in February 1937. However the production of this tank was slow and difficult. And another downside of this tank was that the fuel consumption was very high and it required a lot of maintenance work. In addition to that, the weight and speed of the B1 Biz didn't help either. The engine it used produced 275 horsepower and its top speed was 28 km an hour. The B1 Biz retained the same fuel capacity as the normal Char B1. This amount was about 400 liters. This amount was usually expended within 6 to 8 hours. Because this was quite low, they decided to make the Lorraine 37L, which could store up to 570 liters of fuel. So each company of 10 B1 Biz tanks got 6 Lorraine 37Ls allocated. However, they didn't seem to be able to fill this. By 1940, the right amount of Lorraine 37Ls were allocated to the 1st and 2nd DCR, but the 3rd and 4th didn't. The crew consisted of 4 members, and you needed to be very well trained if you wanted to be a decent crewman in this tank. For example, the commander had a lot of responsibilities. In addition to commanding everyone, he had to be responsible for loading, aiming and firing the 47mm. And he also had a 7.5mm coaxial machine gun. Normally the firing and loading are the jobs of the loader and the machine gunner, but since they are not in this tank, the commander has to take these jobs. 
The other crew members were the radio operator who previously talked about, the driver and the crewman to operate the 75mm howitzer. It took 28 seconds to fully traverse its turret in electric mode and 55 seconds to do this by hand. The electric mode was only used when driving because it took a lot of electricity to do this. Of course in order to operate the gun you need to see, so the commander had access to episcopes and binocular periscopes. The turret also had a rear escape hatch where it could ride if not in any danger. The Battle of France was the first large scale armored fighting. There was some fighting between tanks in World War I, the Spanish Civil War and the Polish invasion but this was all limited. So there was a lot of lessons to be learned in terms of armored warfare. Everyone had their own interpretations of what the best warfare doctrine will be. In 1939 France believed that they had to exploit the line to a limited degree and allow other types of units to complete the breakthrough. Now we come to everyone's favorite part, service history. And oh boy, this is a lot. This is why also I am going to cut up service history into two parts, so two videos, so keep that in mind. At some point I will cut this, this part up, so uh, head on over to the next video, which will appear on screen. But before we begin, I'd like to say that we have several DCRs, four in total, so I'll just mainly refer to them by the numbers. So the first, the second, the third, and the fourth. And if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing and liking and stuff like that. We will start with the first. The first was led by Brigadier General Christian Bernard. This was also the first tank unit to receive an operational B1 all the way back in 1935 to 1936, as well as arguably France's most prestigious tank unit. Bruneau was therefore very much suited to command the first of the French Army Tank Infantry Divisions. The fully outfitted first was planned to advance into Belgium towards the city of Charleroi. The quick German breakthrough through Jordaens led the unit to be redirected on the 14th of May in efforts by the French to try and destroy the bridgehead which had been secured by the Germans. The 1st and its two B1 battalions, the 28th and the 37th, were engaged, basically alone with minimal infantry support against the German troops of two panzer divisions on the 15th of May. The French situation from the start was quite abysmal though. Following the general directions which were issued from the DCR, most logistical and notably refueling elements were all the way at the rear of the division, its convoy which quickly made the situation disastrous, when the high number of refugees fleeing the German advance on the roads made processing a hard affair. As a result of this, large portions of the divisions found themselves out of fuel, utterly incapable of maneuvering. German tanks and troops supported by the aviation started advancing on the French positions at 8.30am on the front of the 28th battalion. The first German tanks to attack were the vehicles of the 5th Panzer divisions, which faced off against the battalion's 3rd company first. The German vehicles came close to overrunning the battalion in the morning, but eventually were forced back because of some considerable losses around 11 am. Returning around 12 am, forces of the 5th Panzer Division, supplemented by the 7th, were engaged with the battalion for all afternoon until they retreated around 6 pm. 